We all want to get good at things we enjoy, right? Be it soccer, painting, guitar, whatever you're into. But see, the problem is that most of you don't really practice. In fact, a lot of you don't even know how to practice. But I mean, it's not really your fault. We all have busy days and a lot of the things we enjoy and do as pastimes are things that are meant to be fun and relaxing. So for a lot of people, the intense focus required for deliberate practice runs against one of the main appeals of why they do that pastime in the first place. Some of you might have also never had a teacher in that specific field, which would make your learning and practice experience that much better and easier. Or better yet, a teacher that not only guides you through those materials, but also shows you how to learn, practice, and grow on your own. That last one is very crucial and something I think is often overlooked. However, just because you do something for fun doesn't mean you won't enjoy spending time and energy getting better at it. And knowing how to practice properly can speed up your growth better than any single training session or tip. So if you're looking to get good at something you enjoy, then this is the video for you. What is up everyone, I am Godin Gaming, and today we're going to learn what it truly means to practice. And I guess the obvious question we should start with is, what is practice? Well, it's kind of a lot of things, and practice can mean different things to different people. So before I give you my answer to that question, I'd like you to indulge me and give your answers in the comments below before watching the rest of the video. Then later we can see if my version is different than what you expected. All right, so what is practice? Practice is problem solving. While a lot of people think practice is just the act of trying to improve, which is mostly true, I think problem solving is a more accurate term. Improving is just too general. Meanwhile, problem solving is much more direct. There is a specific thing we're trying to fix. If we only generally want to improve, we just practice, right? But what does that even mean? What do we practice? How do we practice? However, if we're problem solving, it forces our mind to direct attention at a problem. We are actively looking for not only the solution, but also the problem. And that is a big difference. Say you're playing piano and you want to get better at a song. Side note, I am a piano teacher, so music will be in a lot of my analogies. Anyway, you sit down, music in front of you, and you're ready to practice. The person that just wants to generally improve would likely just play it over and over again, maybe a little bit slower here and there, but just not be very focused or efficient. But the problem solver looks for solutions to specific problems. The piano player might say, I missed this chord again. Why is that? What kind of problem is this? How do I fix it? Or my fingers get mixed up here. Why is that, etc. Problem solving is a more direct approach to improvement and speaks to what practice really is. Getting good at pretty much anything is simply a matter of finding and fixing problems. Missing your shots? Well, that's a problem and we can find a fix. Dying in the open a lot? That's a problem we can fix simply by landing next to... Never mind, wrong video. Say you want to swim faster. Well, there's a solution for that. You want to get better at sniping? Well, there's also a solution for that. So hopefully I made my case about how I think about practice. But now let's talk about what and how we problem solve, aka practice. Number one, identify the problem. This is the most important part about practice. If you can't find the problem you need to fix, you're in big trouble. Your practice sessions will basically be meaningless, like you're a boat without a rudder. You're either just playing or performing, neither of which are that great for learning. This is because you obviously can't fix a problem that you don't know exists. If you're having trouble finding problems, it can help to review your performances or training sessions to get a more objective view with your mind, not worried about performing. This is why I highly recommend recording gameplay and reviewing it or having someone review it for you. By the way, I do live gameplay reviews every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday on Twitch. Feel free to join the Discord where I pull the gameplay from and post the text version of the review. Once you have a general idea of where or what your problem is, you should start digging. Don't just be satisfied by saying, oh, my aim was off or my movement sucks. Be specific. What kind of problem is it? Where is the root of the problem? The more we break it down, the easier it will be to solve. Are you overshooting your aim? Are you aiming at their knees? Are you sliding a lot? Are you jumping too much, etc. Another way to think of it is like this. Working on a two minute section of a song is much harder than working on a 10 second part. And obviously I'll be able to improve that 10 second part way more than that two minute part. And it'll likely be that much better because I'll be able to identify the problems because it's like zooming in on your performance. And it'll be even better if I can identify what type of problem it is, whether it's mechanical, mental, etc. Also for anyone thinking, oh, I don't have any problems. Well, you're obviously wrong. Everyone can get better and every percent counts. So make sure you identify the problem, break it down and be specific. Number two, find a solution. So now we know what the problem is, but we need a plan of action. A great place to start is figuring out if past solutions can be used for your current problem. You'll often find that this will be the case. Not every problem is unique and not every solution is unique either. Say you're swiping your reticle past your targets again. And a previous solution was simply remembering smaller movements, smaller movements. Well, it is totally fine to try that again since refreshers never hurt anyone and it'll likely still help. 
And if you're good at solving problems your own way, I'd say that's worth a try, right? If that isn't the case though, you will need to find a new solution. What I recommend here is using your imagination first. You would be surprised at what you can come up with, especially if you've been at this a while. The main reason we wanna try and find our own method is that creativity can spark interest, commitment, and while it's often just more enjoyable to be creative. In general, we tend to often feel stronger about things we create. One main idea that has helped me is keeping my solutions small and simple. And if you've seen my videos, you'll see that I generally like to use the main idea as a simple phrase, like lay next to cover, play with your team, and use your abilities. Those phrases, though small and simple, can hold a lot of information for you. But the cue that you're giving yourself is very easy to remember and use. But that's simply my preferred method. There are many paths forward, but the moral of the story is you need a plan of action to solve the problem. So now we have a plan, we just need to use it. Number three, test your solution. Now comes the work. We know what we're fixing and how we're gonna do it. We just gotta put the time in and do it. If your plan was to use small phrases, which you should, then you need to repeat them over and over again and actually implement what they mean. If you're saying lay next to cover over and over again, you need to actually try and lay next to cover. Also, while you're testing your solution, you need to be laser focused. You can't afford to be distracted because any time spent being distracted will not only increase the amount of time it takes to fix the problem, but it will also reduce the quality of the fix. You might be distracted by noticing another problem. You might be working on getting used to a new keybind when you notice that you're dying alone a lot. While this is a problem we should fix, it is not the focus of your current session. So write it down, forget about it for now, and get back to your solution. You should also not focus on your performance, i.e. how well you played or if you win or lose. When learning a new technique or when working on a specific skill or drill, it is expected for your performance to drop. And that's fine. That is just how practice works. For instance, if I'm working on my finger technique for a specific section of a song, I'm obviously not going to be able to focus on playing the whole thing that well, but I will improve on that section much faster than I would have otherwise. So you need to totally ignore the scoreboard if your goal is good practice. Any time spent focusing on your performance while practicing is wasted time and energy, and more importantly, a bad practice habit. So stay focused on your solution and don't worry about B if you're focusing on A. Number four, evaluate. Now that you've had a little time implementing a solution to your problem, you're done, right? Wrong. You absolutely need to evaluate how that solution actually worked. It might feel like you fixed the problem because you spent a bunch of time on it, but we need to take a hard look to see if it actually solved the problem. So go into another session of performance and try to evaluate your progress on that specific problem. A true marker for good practice is not completely fixing a problem or being perfect because that never happens. A true marker for good practice is whether you are better than you were before. I can't stress this enough. People often get frustrated with themselves because the performance is not where they want it to be. This stems from the fact that they are focused on their current performance and not their progress. It doesn't matter where you are today. What matters is your commitment to the process of practice. The aim here is progress, not perfection. So now you know what to look for, your progress. But evaluation can be a tough aspect of practice because you have to evaluate the effectiveness of your solution and there are a lot of variables. Did it work? Was it efficient? And more importantly, is there a better solution? Oftentimes there is, because while it's super easy and simple to stay with your current method, at least if you're seeing progress, you might be missing out on a much better method that is both faster and just more effective. So you might have to go back and try another solution. And when we do find a better solution, it will save us time and energy later on. The main reason for doing the evaluation stage is not to improve any aspect of your performance, but more to improve our practice methods. If practicing is like sharpening your ax, the evaluation stage is improving your sharpening technique. To sum up the evaluation stage, we're not just here to practice, we're also here to practice how we practice. So those are the four main stages of practice as problem solving. Identify the problem, find a solution, test the solution, evaluate. Once you've gone past the final stage, it just loops back around. You look for another problem or a different method, and it's an endless cycle of constant improvement. So now that we have a better idea of what and how we should practice, it's gonna be easy to implement, right? Well, probably not because it's definitely not easy, trust me. One thing that can really help with this is having a guided practice session with a teacher. And so every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, I'll be doing guided practice sessions in Destiny with a handful of people. So if you're interested, feel free to join the Discord in the link below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next session. But if you're on your own, basically, we have to find a way for you to stay on track. Knowing everything in this video is all fine and dandy, but if you aren't able to maintain your focus on problem solving, it just won't add up to much. One thing that really helps with this is self-assessment the habit of continuously checking in with oneself. It's intentional mental focus mixed with self-awareness. You might know it by its other name, deliberate practice. So what does that mean? It means you are continuously aware of and committed to your goals. 
And I find the best way to do that is to constantly ask yourself questions because they demand an answer, ideally one that forces you to assess yourself honestly. During my practice, I have a list of helpful questions I ask myself to keep me on track. They are, what was I trying to do? How did it go? What's next? In my practice sessions, I ask them in that order and as frequently as possible. After every death, every few kills, and if I can manage it, every few seconds. The more you ask them, the easier it will be to stay on track. Again, these questions force you to have an answer. And if you notice, these also coincide with the four stages of problem solving. If you can't answer, what was I trying to do? Then you didn't identify a problem and you didn't offer a solution. If you can't answer, how did it go? Then you weren't paying attention while you were testing your solution. And if you can't answer what's next, then you weren't evaluating properly. So please use these questions and frequently. If you aren't using them, there's a good chance you'll go on autopilot and not have a productive practice sessions. I can't stress enough how important it is that you stay on task. Deliberate practice goes a long way. Now that's all well and good, but are you actually gonna use this information? No, really. How often do you watch a tip video and then think, yeah, okay, I get it. And then maybe practice the tip once or twice, if at all, and that's even if you remember it and then not think about it basically ever again. The truth is, it is very hard to change someone's behavior. But practice is the skill of skills. It's literally how you incorporate any other skill into your life. And as such, it will dictate how easy or hard your personal growth and skill acquisition will be. So if I had to choose one thing I wish people could take away from any tip video, it's this. Knowing how to have good, consistent practice is the ultimate skill. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the video. But before I go, I wanna let you guys know that I'll be doing some Beyond Light giveaways. It's uh, only the expansion, not the seasons. I'll be having one this Friday and every second Friday after that until the launch. So if you or anyone you know is interested in Beyond Light, there'll be a link in the description below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope some of you found that valuable. Feel free to let me know what you think my next video should be on. And for everyone that made it this far, happy practicing.